Hello, humans! I'm you, Schiller, and welcome back to some more Pikmin 2! In the previous part, I visited the Valley of Repos for the first time, and I began collecting treasure so that I can repay my planet's debt! My home planet, that is. In this part, I'm gonna revisit the Valley of Repos, I'm going to hopefully find more treasure, and I'm going to showcase more mechanics within this game. Let me say up front that this game is going to start off in a very slow manner. While it does throw me immediately into the action, there are going to be plenty of tutorials and it's going to be teaching me a bunch of things and this game has a lot of mechanics to it, so it is going to take a while for me to just be able to, you know, sit down and play the game how I want. For the time being, this level is still going to act as a bit of a tutorial level, however, in contrast to the previous part, this day will focus more on showing me new things as opposed to old things from the previous Pikmin game, like the last part did. Anyway, good morning workers, ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? I guess so. The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures! Yes, well that is how Pikmin do things. They go to sleep at night time and then I have to call them out of the onion and put them to work. So it's fine, it's not a big deal, I wouldn't call them lazy, they're helping me. No wonder they lack survival skills. Okay, so stand beneath the onion, press A, and then you can determine how many Pikmin you want to call out. For the sake of today, I'm just gonna call them all out. I have about 20 Pikmin, I think it's exactly 20 Pikmin, yeah. So I'm just gonna call them all out right now, because today, I'm going to be increasing my Pikmin count, and I'm going to be finding more treasure, and I'm going to be showcasing all sorts of new stuff that is new to Pikmin 2. So for the time being, there are some pellets nearby, I may as well take them over to the onion. And you might also notice that at the very top of the screen, there is now a timer. This was not present on day one, but it will be present for every subsequent day. This timer will run out once that little sundial reaches the right side of the screen. Each day within this game lasts about 13 to 14 to 15 minutes, 13 to 15 minutes I'm guessing. So manage your time effectively and wisely. Now the good news about this game, in contrast to the first Pikmin game, is that there is no day limit. In the first Pikmin game you only had 30 days to complete the game. In this game, you can take as many days as you want. You can run out your game system's memory if you wanted to. I mean, I don't know if that's actually possible. I mean, I'm sure it is, but I'm also fairly certain that you'll be able to complete the game by the time you reach a number that's so unstakably high that the game starts freaking out. So for the time being, just plan your days accordingly. Don't worry about how many days it takes. Just worry about how many things you can do in one day. So this is day two. And if you guys ever need to keep track of the things I'm doing, because I don't know how many days it's going to take me to complete this game, I will always keep a list of notes in the description that marks every major event that happened on the day. So, since the events in Pikmin can be done in all sorts of different orders, I'm always going to keep track of everything that I do in the description of every single Pikmin 2 part. So in case you just want to see how I get a specific item, or when I discover a specific thing, it'll always be in the description. Rest assured, I'm putting in the extra effort. Anyway, I don't really think there's anything up here. So, like I was saying earlier, this level is still going to be a bit of a tutorial level. There are specific things that the game wants me to do in a specific order. So for the time being, let's wait for those Pikmin to carry those pellets back to the Onion, and then I'll get the rest of this day s uh, underway. Not started, but I'll get the rest of the day going. So let's speed up this process a little bit. Let's put two Pikmin per pellet, double the speed, and then any leftover Pikmin can go on top of this paper bag. You may recall that yesterday I could not press down this paper bag all the way because I needed 35 Pikmin. Well, now I have 35 Pikmin, but I don't have 35 Pikmin in control right now because five of them are elsewhere. Or six of them are elsewhere. There we go. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. So you guys do that. Yep, all right. And then Louie can go ahead and pluck them. Also, this flower has grown. It now has a five pellets on it. So you guys can get this pellet. Meanwhile, I will pluck these newly sprouted Pikmin, and I will increase my Pikmin total. So as you can see, I now have 42 Pikmin total. That's more than enough to blow out that paper bag. Good, good. I'll be back here in just a moment. Let's go. All right, oh, no, don't get stuck behind the wall now. That can happen, and it is kind of frustrating when it does happen. Uh, all right, oh, you know, all right, I'm already back here. I'll pluck them. I'm not really doing things too effectively, but it's fine. There are only specific things that I'm supposed to be doing on this day anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. As long as they don't run out the clock, I should be fine. So, okay, let's go back over to this paper bag. Okay, I've got 47 Pikmin. I've got more than enough. All I need are five, so let's go. Let's put five on here. Let's put a bunch on here. Boom! Easy stuff, right? Well, enjoy it while you can, because this game is about to become very confusing and very complex. So enjoy the simple stuff while it lasts. 
For now, I'm going to leave Louie behind and I'm going to leave a few Pikmin behind just in case. I'm about to take down some enemies. If you recall from yesterday, this is known as a Bulborb. The best way to attack a Bulborb is to go at it from behind, rush all your Pikmin toward it, and simply take it down. Boom. Simple as that. Didn't lose any Pikmin. Now I'm going to undergo a similar process for this big Bulborb over here. We call these Dwarf Bulborbs. Okay? So here we go. Here we go. Sneak up on it and rush it from behind. There you go. Always attack these things from behind. It's the best way to go at them or else they'll eat your Pikmin. Boom. Simple as that. And if you defeat them in an effective enough manner, they will drop pellets. So you can get bonus Pikmin for defeating them. They'll drop the pellet. You can carry the pellet back to the onion. And you can carry the carcass of the dead body back to the onion. I guess carcass of the dead body is a redundant statement, so forgive me for that. But you get the idea. You can carry all of these things back to the onion and get more Pikmin sprouted. They all count as nutrients. So I'm going to have some Pikmin tear down this bone wall that's up ahead. And I'm going to have other Pikmin carry these nutrients back. Okay, so Louie, you've still got... Oh, no, no, this works out perfectly. Cool. Okay. And then there is some other stuff that I can do over here real quickly. I'll take care of that once these Pikmin carry these nutrients back to the onion. So let's have Louie stick around over here. And then I'll have Olimar take care of the other Pikmin that are tearing down that wall. Now that wall, I don't know if it has an official name, but I affectionately refer to them as bone walls. Because the walls look like they're made out of bones. So for the time being, I'm going to have those Pikmin tear down those bone walls. All you have to do is rush your Pikmin up to the wall, and they'll slowly chip away at it until the wall is completely knocked down. So, as you might see in a moment, this wall will drop down a little bit. And, you know, if I put more Pikmin on it, the faster this process will go. So let's go ahead and do that. Good. Uh, oh, wait, 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 nope, there it goes. Okay, so it's dropping down slowly but surely. It drops down three times. Once it's dropped down the third time, the wall will forever be knocked down. The wall doesn't grow back. None of that happens. Once you tear down a wall, it's torn down forever! So enjoy it! Enjoy the freedom! Enjoy the peace! You have access to new territories once you tear down a wall. It's great. So, while those Pikmin continue to tear down the bone wall, because it still has a little bit of a ways to go, I'm going to have other Pikmin carry this artifact back to the ship so that I can continue to earn money while I'm here. I don't know what this is, technically. I'm not supposed to know what this is. But the ship will name it once it gets back. Now, it doesn't have enough Pikmin to carry it back, so I'm going to have Louie take a few of these Pikmin away. There you go, I think you guys can get the rest of it. There, alright, whatever. And then you guys, whoops, I didn't mean to dismiss you. You guys can carry this back, alright? Trying to do things in an efficient manner, I'm not really doing the best job, but hey. I'm doing what I can. I have some Pikmin tearing down a wall, I have other Pikmin being sprouted, I have other Pikmin carrying artifacts back to the ship so I can repay my planet's home debt. Or home planet's debt. I'm sorry, sometimes I speak so quickly that I put words in the wrong order. Okay. Well, I guess while that wall continues to be torn down and while some Pikmin continue to carry artifacts back to the ship, I'm going to pluck these Pikmin. And while I could do this more quickly by having Louie with me, I do want Louie to just stick around over there with the other Pikmin so that when the bone wall is completely torn down, he's with them so that they don't feel lonely or abandoned or anything like that. Good. Good. Look at this. Look at all the Pikmin I have now. Isn't this great? I've more than tripled my Pikmin count since yesterday. Probably the only time I'm going to be able to say that. <laughs> How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When massed, their might is ferocious. Yes, that is the idea behind Pikmin. The more Pikmin you have doing one action, the more quickly it will go. Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? Well, Olimar didn't. I did! The narrator! Or I guess since I'm playing as the character Olimar, Olimar did instruct Louis. Whatever. Apparently not. Olimar, you are failing as your duty as a superior. Blah, 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 blah. Press A to grab Pikmin and release to throw them. Call them into a group with B. So I've already shown all that. B blows a whistle. That will bring all the nearby Pikmin to you. And if you press A, you will throw a Pikmin to wherever your reticle is currently aiming. If you just want to completely dismiss all of your Pikmin, all you have to do is press C. And if you press down on the D-pad, all of your Pikmin will perform one specific action based on where you push down on the D-pad. Make sense? Good. Okay. So I just I explained everything in a simple manner. If you don't like the way I explain things, you can always replay that part of the video, mute me, and just read the text. But simply put, I'm just going to be doing all of these actions throughout the game. I probably won't be explaining too much. I mean, I'm going to be explaining stuff, but sometimes I might not explain things in the same way that the game's text explains things. Anyway, I can't go that way just yet because there's water over there. And let me tell you, these Pikmin are not waterproof, okay? They have other special abilities, but... Going through water is not one of them, so we'll go through that water patch a little later. Or rather, maybe a long time later, but we'll go through it at a future date. We're not going through that water patch right now. So, 
I'll show you what we're gonna do once we carry this random thing back to the ship. So, okay, ship, what is the wonderful name that you have for this artifact? Hmm? Utter Scrap. I guess I like it, but I think you could have done better. I mean, if I point this straight at the camera, it looks like it's a face going, Ah! I don't know. You could have named it that. But okay, utter scrap is fine too. You know, if you took the S out of the word, you'd have a completely different term that would also be appropriate. Anyway, here is a new mechanic of this game. This is a hole. And as weird as that sounds, yes, these random air holes are new to Pikmin. They were not in the first Pikmin game, they are only in Pikmin 2. There are similar things in Pikmin 1 where if you stand on them, air blows out of it and it shoots you up to another part of the level. But in this game, you actually go inside of these air holes to underground territories. So I shall be demonstrating what these underground territories are in just a moment. Do not fear the leaders group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod too. So, here is how this works. Only the Pikmin that are with the person going into the hole We'll go into the hole. So if I have Olimar on one side of the level with 20 Pikmin, and I have Louie at the hole with 30 Pikmin, only those 30 Pikmin will go with me inside of the hole. So, for the time being, I'm going to reunite Olimar and Louie, and I'm gonna take all of these Pikmin into the hole, okay? I'm gonna take as many Pikmin in as I can, because once I go into this hole, I can't bring more Pikmin with me until I exit the hole. Make sense? I hope so, because I'm going to be demonstrating things visually in just a moment. So here we go. Come on, Pikmin. Come with me. I know it's cold. It's I, I understand. But you know, the good thing about the cold is that you can go inside and feel all warm and cozy, and it's perfectly acceptable. So here we go. Go up to this hole. Press A. This is the emergence cave. Now, you'll notice that there are a few different things on display right now. There are a bunch of circles at the top. You don't have to worry about that right now. I'll discuss that in greater detail the next time I have to go inside one of these holes because as you can imagine this is not the only hole in this game okay so for now you have nothing to worry about just go inside the hole with as many Pikmin as you can and here we are emergence cave sub level one so we are underground and as weird as it sounds when we're underground you don't have to worry about a timer there's no sundial at the top of the screen you can take as much time as you want inside of these underground sub-levels. It's amazing. Intriguing. My heat sensors are indicating that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Okay, that much isn't too important gameplay-wise, but it is nice to be in a warm and cozy area. Anal uh, analysis suggests danger lies ahead, but the promise of treasure is tantalizing. Oh, don't worry. We're underground. That's where all the treasure is. If you wish to check underground terrain, press plus to communicate with me. Okay, simple as that. If you want to see a map, all you have to do is press plus. I am not just a ship. I am an all-purpose support pod. Ah, I like the way you advertise yourself. It's like saying you're not just a person that mows lawn. You are a person who specializes in agricultural design. You can get away with that on a resume, I promise you. Anyway, so as you can see, on the map, you can only see things on the map that you've already visited. So, this is the entire sub-level at the moment. Just this tiny little dumbbell-shaped thing. There are also some bulborbs over here. These are called snowy bulborbs. As you can see, not much is different about them in terms of appearance, other than the fact that they're white instead of red. But, rest assured, they are actually weaker than traditional bulborbs. They can still eat your Pikmin, so I'm gonna leave a couple of them behind. But you can defeat them more quickly and... You don't have to worry as much because they're a bit slower, they're they're weaker. Yeah, see? I don't think I- Ah! Uh, okay, I don't think I've lost any Pikmin, so we're good. Okay, so now my Pikmin are carrying this artifact back to... Well, they're not going to carry it back to the ship. They're going to carry it back to where I came in. They're also going to carry any other things that can be carried back to that same spot of light. And here's what happens if Pikmin carry different things to the spot of light. If they carry an artifact back to the spot of light, it will count like any other artifact. I'll get more money put toward the debt. I'll, it'll be counted as an item that I recovered in this level. It'll work normally, right? So here we go. I have this seven up bottle cap that is known as a quenching emblem. It's worth 100 coins, pokos, whatever it is, okay? So that all counts normally. But if I carry an enemy or a nutrient back, here's what happens. It does not add to my Pikmin total. How can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. 
Yeah, I don't know why you'd be so upset about me bringing a living organism that is now dead back to the treasure. I mean, you can do a lot of things with a dead animal. I don't know, maybe you can cut off its skin and use it as some sort of clothing wear. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, now we have this artifact being brought back. This is known as the citrus lump. Citrus lump. Well, I guess it's not inaccurate. I don't come up with the names. Anyway, so yeah, that's what happens if you carry beasts, the remains of dead animals, nutrients, back to this glowing spot of light. It does not add to your Pikmin count, it adds to your money account, and only in small amounts. So it's not really that necessary, but if you just want a few extra coins, you can do that. It's not such a big deal, so I won't be doing it every single time. Anyway, this hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treasure strain ahead. So, this is not the only sub-level. We're going to go down further into more sub-levels. Louie, you do recall that you can adjust the camera with Z and up, left, and right on the D-pad, right? Or correct? The your expressions exact I can't even read anything. Your, your expression suggests that you do. Excellent. Don't worry. All of your Pikmin will follow you. Approach the hole and press A to enter it. So here's how this whole sub-level stuff works. No matter where you are in the sub-level, if one of the captains goes up to the hole, regardless of where the other Pikmin are, if I just push A in front of it, I will dive down into the next sub-level and all of my other Pikmin that are with me will follow me. Here's the catch. Like I was saying earlier, I cannot bring more Pikmin with me once I've already entered the first sub-level. So, I have to make sure that I don't lose any Pikmin while I'm down here in these sub-levels because I cannot generate any more. You saw that when I carried nutrients back, it only counted toward money, not my Pikmin count. So that's the catch. You can enter these sub-levels, doesn't matter where you are on the map, the Pikmin will follow you. But, if you lose any Pikmin, well, there's no real way to actually sprout more once you're down here. So try to keep things safe. Anyway, we're gonna carry these snowy bulborbs back. May as well, there's only so much I can do down here and there's not a time limit, so things should be fine. But there is another artifact down here. Hmm, how mysterious. It's inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. Oh man, ship, or whatever I should call you. You'd be surprised at all the things that you can find that would be buried underneath the planet's surface. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Yes, it's convenient, isn't it? Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. <laughs> what are you implying, ship? But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red pigmen will be unable to lift it. Hmm. Well. I previously explained that only so many Pikmin can be on the field at one time. I have 70 Pikmin with me, and I don't have any more. And even if I did, I can only have 100 Pikmin on the field at a time. This needs at least 101 Pikmin, so at the moment, I can't carry this. So I'll have to figure out something else. Oh, if only this was a tutorial level that could give me the exact mechanic that I needed in order to progress through this part of the game. Oh, if only there was a convenient solution to this problem that was randomly spawned before me. If only. Ah, uh, well, I guess for the time being, I may as well just take out all the other bull groups that are down here. They'll still increase my money total, so I can still get closer to repaying my debt. And I don't have a time limit down here, so there really isn't a reason why you shouldn't do this. Plus, if there is more treasure down here, I don't want these things randomly eating my Pikmin while they carry it back, so... Let's just take him out for safekeeping and for a few extra bucks, or a few extra coins, I guess. Anyway, here's another new mechanic of this game. Now, flowers aren't a new mechanic. Flowers were in Pikmin 1, but purple flowers are new. Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. Ah, uh, well, I mean, that's warm temperatures for you. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. Well, that's an interesting urge. I've never really wanted to be tossed into a flower, but hey, I'm not a Pikmin. But okay, you guys have been helping me out. If you really want to be tossed into a flower so badly, I'm happy to oblige. Also, this is the rest of the ground floor. I think one or two of my Pikmin got stuck behind something? I don't know where they went. But I guess it doesn't really matter because no matter what I do down here, as long as they're not dead, they'll come with me. Anyway, okay, so in Pikmin 1, there were red, blue, and yellow flowers to correspond with the available Pikmin that were in the game. 
when you threw a Pikmin into them, the flower would change the Pikmin type. So if I threw a red Pikmin into a yellow flower, the flower would sprout a yellow Pikmin. So as you can probably guess, if I throw a Pikmin into these purple flowers, I'll probably get a purple Pikmin, assuming I can aim. There we go. Okay, so the Pikmin are still carrying those things back to the glowy spot of light. Excellent. And now, here we are. Let's see what happens when I pluck these! Oh, yeah, that was spot on. Purple Pikmin. I mean, it's kind of obvious it was a selling point for Pikmin too. They're on the box art, yada, yada, yada. Here we go, purple Pikmin. Amazing, a purple Pikmin. It has hair and is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. Yeah, so that's the main mechanic of purple Pikmin. They're stronger than any other type of Pikmin, and I'll showcase that in just a moment. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers. Oh, that's a question. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps there are others? Other flowers? I mean, there's one right next to me. But you can only throw five Pikmin into a flower at a time, and purple flowers are only temporary. So once I throw five more Pikmin into this flower, the flower is going to be gone forever. So for now, you can only have ten purple Pikmin. So enjoy it while you can. But yes, the main mechanic of purple Pikmin is that they are stronger. So you saw back over there, there was an artifact that was buried down that needed 101 Pikmin. Well, this might just be our conveniently placed solution. But purple Pikmin also have other properties. For example, if I call them over to me and I throw them, you'll notice that they hit the ground harder than red Pikmin. So the impact that they can give toward enemies can usually take them out immediately. So that will be useful later. For now, let's test out their other strength. And by that, I mean their strength in terms of carrying objects. So you saw that this random artifact needed 101 Pikmin. Well, the strength of one purple Pikmin is equivalent to that of 10 red Pikmin. So, as an example, this bull orb usually takes three Pikmin to carry it, but only one purple Pikmin is necessary to carry it back. See that? Cool stuff. So this is how you can carry objects that require more than the amount of Pikmin that can be placed onto the field at one time. I can also have more Pikmin carry this object like usual to speed up the process. Now, even though it says 13 Pikmin are carrying it, it just means that the strength of 13 Pikmin are carrying that object. It doesn't mean that 13 actual Pikmin are carrying it. One purple Pikmin is not worth 10 Pikmin, okay? It just has the strength of 10 Pikmin. Make sense? I hope so. So anyway, here we go. Simple as that. Carrying all of these things back to the glowy spot of light. And if it isn't obvious, this artifact is a globe, okay? It is a globe based on planet Earth, and if it's not obvious, this game is supposed to be based on planet Earth. It's supposed to be based on the idea that humans lived on Earth, we all died out, and these are the remains. And now Captain Olimar and Captain Louie are visiting this planet and finding whatever they can to repay their home debt. So they're using all of our old stuff to pay off their debt. So how do you like this? A globe of our planet, the top half at least, is worth 200 coins in their currency. Isn't that cool? Spherical Atlas. Yeah, you can see the northern hemisphere. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside this sphere. Retrieving data. Well, that's interesting. I don't usually find microchips inside of my classroom globes. Whatever. Error. I could only decode a portion of the data. But I did retrieve new geographic charts. Cool. What that means is we've unlocked another level on the map. Isn't that also convenient? I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the sphere chart. Okay. Whatever. That's not too important right now. Press plus to contact me and go to the exploration kit on the radar screen by pressing left or, or by pressing left on D-pad. Now that we have this new data, you should explore the Dakota territory tomorrow. Yeah, so you've unlocked a new map or a new level on the map and we'll explore that tomorrow. Also, I don't know if you guys heard that random sound effect, but usually there's like this random sound effect that will go off in sub-levels. That sound effect implies that you have found every artifact on the sub-level. So, because I heard that sound effect, that means that there are no other treasures for me to find. That sound effect does not include the carcasses of dead enemies, okay? It's only counting the actual artifacts and treasures that are within these sub-levels. So, I have found every artifact or treasure that is here. 
Anyway, as you can see, this is a geyser or an air geyser or whatever. Astounding! Water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force. Yeah, so these were in Pikmin 1. This is what I was talking about earlier. Sensors indicate it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try. Simple as that. So if you want to get out of these sub-levels, once you get down to the final sub-level, in order to get out, all you have to do is find a geyser and it will blow you all the way back into the sky, back onto the regular part of the level, and the daytime counter will continue. So, here we are. We're done with the first sub-level area of the game. And every time you leave a sub-level, it will give you a nice little chart showcasing everything that you've collected. So I got the Spherical Atlas, the Citrus Lump, Quenching Emblem, and I guess I collected everything that was in there because now it's telling me that the cave is complete. Good stuff. Boom! Yeah. So there are only three treasures down there, and then I got some random other enemies to help repay my debt. Good stuff. Okay, now we're back to the regular day at hand in the Valley of Repose. Now, normally, the day would continue. You'd be able to do other things. You can do whatever the heck you want whenever sub-level caves are completed. But on this day, because things are still a bit tutorial-based, this day will actually end. So, enjoy. You did everything that you could for this day. But then, finally, on day three and onward, you'll be able to pretty much do things in any order that you want. Yes, there will still be more tutorials. Yes, the game will still teach you plenty of things and hold your hand for parts of it. There will still be more pauses like this where the ship will talk super slowly and discuss things and yada yada yada. But for the time being, we are done with those sub-level tutorials. We are done with the simple stuff. Anyway, you've got you gathered a large amount of data that needs in-depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. Okay, there are there are a few other things that I wanted to discuss. Like, where do purple Pikmin go, and how do you get more purple Pikmin, and what happens if you lose purple Pikmin. There are other things. I will have to discuss those tomorrow when I can actually showcase these things, because for now, like I said, the game is still going through tutorials. It's going to get me off of this planet, like it's saying here. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. <sighs> you should take a much needed rest as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. Yeah, it has been 27 minutes, and I do have an infinite amount of time in this game. I mean, I only have specific time per day, but I have an infinite amount of days to complete this game, unlike Pikmin 1, so that's the idea. It said, haste makes waste. Take as much time as you need to beat the game. So here you go, here's the usual end of the day sequence, and as you noticed, the purple Pikmin don't get inside of an onion. They go inside of the ship. So purple Pikmin do not sprout like normal red Pikmin. And I'll try to discuss that more tomorrow. For the time being, my Pikmin are safe. I did not leave any behind. We are going home. Also, if it's any indication with this part being almost 28 minutes, these parts are going to be pretty long. Since the time is infinite inside of those caves and sub-levels and whatever, some of these parts will be really, really long. And we'll just see how things go when the time comes. For now, I got all sorts of artifacts, got all sorts of funds. Today, I like to think, was a successful day. I didn't lose any Pikmin, I discovered purple Pikmin, I increased my total count to 70 Pikmin total. I think that things are going swelly. Swelly? Things are going well, how about that? Baby steps first, Olimar! Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hockatate savings and loan, after all. Besides, there's nothing left to repossess, so HA! Ah, uh, you'll grow to love this guy. He's one of those fun, happy presidents. I don't know if he's young, but he seems like he has the spirits of a young entrepreneur, and that's why I like him. Anyway, whew, that's day two of Pikmin 2. If you thought this part was long, well, we're just getting started. I don't really know how many parts long this walkthrough's gonna be, but it will take me a considerable amount of time to beat it, and each of these parts will be long, so we'll see what my total game time is by the end of the game. But for now, that's the end of today, and that's the end of this part. So, that wraps up this part of Pikmin 2, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. See you all next time in the next part, on day 3, when I visit this new area known as the Awakening Wood. Bye bye humans! Whoosh! Hey guys! Thank you so much for watching my video! If you enjoyed the video, then please consider checking out one of my other videos. On the screen right now, there are various videos and annotations. If you click on one, you'll be redirected to one of my other videos. I post new content every single day, so there's bound to be something that'll catch your interest. And hey! If you want to continue supporting me, then please subscribe to my channel so that you can stay up to date with all of my latest videos and announcements. It's free, and it really helps me out.
Also, I have a Twitter account. I usually post announcements there, so if you want to know what my upcoming plans are, then I strongly advise that you check that out as well. Anyway, thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you around in the future. Bye-bye, humans! Whoosh!